Hey there everyone, welcome back to Measure and Mix. Happy 2019. Thank you guys so much for coming back and joining me in the new year. I really appreciate it. This is my very first video of the new year and going to be my very first project of 2019. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. I'm gonna be making over my laundry room and I'm gonna be doing it in kind of like a mini series. So there'll be a few different episodes of how I make over my laundry room and what I do to do that. I'm gonna be doing some DIY and some budget-friendly ideas. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And also don't forget to hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. So for this laundry room makeover, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing and I just decided to take the opportunity and run with it. I was planning on doing a laundry room makeover but not for a while. But unfortunately, our dryer broke down um, a few days ago. The wires in the back were actually melting and it was just gonna be more costly to have someone come out and try to repair it. Also, it's a little unsafe when you have um, wires melting in the back of your dryer. So I just didn't feel comfortable with it anymore and I figured might as well go ahead and replace the dryer and it was just gonna be more cost effective to go ahead and replace the washer as well. So I've been wanting a stackable unit to go inside my laundry room since I don't have that much space in my laundry room and this will give me a ton of more room um, in there and my dogs are in there and everything so I just needed to make the most out of the space. So I bought a new stackable unit and I am going to get it here in a few days, but I thought I would take the opportunity to do something in my laundry room that I've wanted to do for a while now, and that is stencil my tile floors in there. So since nothing is in there right now, um, no washer, no dryer, we moved everything out, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that today. So I hope you stick around to see how it turns out. All right, so the first thing I needed to do was prep my floors, and they were pretty dirty because we had been moving things in and out, and my dogs stay in there, and it's a laundry room, so lint gets trapped in there. So I really needed to cl clean my floors really well. So I swept them and got all the loose debris up, and then I got out my uh, Bissell Crosswave that I got for Christmas, which I love, and I just mopped the floor with that. And then I went a step further, and I got this TSP, which you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot or online even at Amazon and I put a quarter cup of that in two gallons of warm water and then I just took a sponge and just went and wiped the floors and scrubbed them um, just to make sure all the grease and grime were off of them then after that I was ready to paint the floor with my base coat of white I did not use a primer I probably should have most people do use a primer but I was using leftover paint that I had from last year when I stenciled my concrete floors in my basement. So this was the Valspar Latex Porch and Patio Paint in white. And if you guys missed that video, I will link that up above and down below. That was my very first video here on YouTube. I painted and stenciled my basement floors and they are holding up really well. I'm going to do a video um, soon about that, so stay tuned for that. But I decided to go ahead and use this paint to uh, put on the tiles um, because it's a really durable paint. So I know a lot of people use chalk paint when they uh, tile, when they paint their tile floors, but this is what I had, so I went with it. And I ended up putting three coats of this white paint onto the tile. After the three coats of white paint was dry, it was time to stencil, and since I did not have time to order a stencil, I went to Michael's and found this 12 by 12 tile stencil um, in the Folk Art brand, and it was, I think, about $8.50, and then I used a 40% off coupon, so it made it really affordable, um, and then I just used a little paint tray and a small roller, and I needed some paper towels, and then I had a extra old towel um, or you could use a drop cloth if you had that 
And then for the stencil paint, I'm using the same stencil paint I used for my basement. It is just a regular gray paint. It's a false bar. It's a porch and patio paint and I am just using that to do my stencil. So I went ahead and placed my stencil in the middle of my tile. The stencil was um, not big enough to go over the tile so that way it would overlap on each tile. It was just kind of a stencil that you just put in the middle of the tile and centered it. So I just made sure that um, I had equal amounts of space on each side of the stencil and centered the stencil in the middle of that tile. And then I went ahead and I took my roller and I put some paint on it. And then you can see there I'm using the paper towel and I'm off rolling onto the paper towel. And that's because I don't want too much paint on my roller because it will bleed through the stencil. So I'm just rolling it onto the stencil very lightly and uh, that way it will not bleed through the stencil. If I wanted it darker on my stencil, I would need to um, leave my stencil there, roll it really lightly, then leave my stencil uh, sitting there and let the paint dry for a few minutes and then come back with more paint and roll again. So that way you are not applying too much pressure with the roller and you are not applying too much paint so that it bleeds through. After the first full tile was finished, I just worked my way around the room and stenciled all the full tiles and left the outer edges um, around the wall that were not full tiles. I left those till the end because you'll have to bend your stencil to get the, those edges so you don't want to um, tear or rip your stencil by accident when you're doing those so you always want to leave those to the end. And I did not load my roller with paint every time I stenciled. I only loaded my roller about every three or four stencils and then again I um, just off rolled onto a paper towel before I stenciled so I wouldn't get that bleed through. Also as you're stenciling the stencil gets a lot of paint build up on it so I didn't do this for this particular stencil in this room because it was so small and I didn't think it was too necessary but it does get build up paint on it and it would be helpful to wipe it down every few stencils or even take it and wash it off and dry it off um, before you keep stenciling so that way you don't get any bleed through. After I was finished stenciling the full tiles, I let them dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. It doesn't take very long at all um, because you're not applying that much paint so it dries fairly quickly. And now I'm coming back to stencil the outside edges and the smaller tiles. And I went ahead and taped off my baseboards. You can remove your baseboards. I did that in my uh, last video when I stenciled my basement. Um, I removed the baseboards. But for this, I didn't think it was necessary. I just laid my tile, or I'm sorry, I laid my stencil on the tile and uh, just bent it up against the wall and just made sure that it was even and I rolled my paint onto the stencil. Now you do want to make sure that you are rolling um, towards the wall as well so that way you can get this uh, design as close to the wall as possible. Um, it won't be perfect. You'll have a little bit of a gap if you don't take your baseboards off but I didn't think it looked that bad, so I didn't mind that um, in this case. And then I got to the second to the last tile and I started rolling the paint on and I think I had too much paint on the roller and it just didn't look right. So what's good about this is I just wiped the gray paint off and I went back with the white paint and painted over it a couple times and let it dry and went on and finished my stenciling like you see here. Um, and then I came back later on after the white paint was dry and I just re-stenciled my design and it worked out perfectly. It was like nothing ever happened. So that's what's good about this. If you make a mistake, you can come back. 
Um, so for this little tile in the corner, I really didn't need to stencil it, um, but uh, I decided to anyways because my washer and dryer is going to be there, but I decided to go ahead and stencil it. So it was the last tile, so I went ahead and cut the stencil to the size that I needed to and then just stenciled underneath that little vent there. And then for the very last step, I am coating this with some of this polyurethane. It is a matte finish. I actually just had this in my garage, so I didn't have to go out and purchase it, which was good. So I just went ahead and um, poured some in a container and just rolled it all over the floor. And I ended up doing three coats of the polyurethane because I wanted it to be really durable um, since this is a high traffic area. Alright guys, I hope you liked how my stenciled tile floor came out. I think it turned out really pretty. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the rest of the laundry room makeover. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.